Hello and welcome to this week's uh, podcast. I have got lots of stuff to tell you about. I've done quite a lot of knitting this week, uh, made some progress and I have some exciting news about upcoming events and I've gotten a rekindled an old hobby. So I will tell you about all of that in this week's podcast. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. So first, I'm going to tell you about my Italian knitting retreat. So I did share this last week, and I said there was a bit of a problem with the link. I think the problem was called by caused by um, Chrome because I had problems opening the link in my Chrome browser on my laptop. I didn't have problems opening in, opening it in Chrome on my phone. But I've updated Chrome again this morning and it seems to be working fine now. So I'll put the link below this video. If you have any problems with it, do let me know. Um, either comment on this video or send me an email. And if you're interested and you can't view the link, I can send you information by email. Just get in touch with me. So we are going to Hotel Leone, which is a boutique retreat centre in central Italy, um, between the Sibillini Mountains and the Adriatic coast near uh, Ancona. There'll be lots of time for knitting and relaxing, and I will design a special retreat project. There'll probably be at least a couple of different versions to cater for different experience levels, and I will also do some workshops around the project. It will be lace knitting based, but you don't need to have any prior experience. So as long as you can knit and purl and cast on and cast off, you'll be absolutely fine. If you've done a bit more lace knitting, that's fine too. I'll have at least two or three different experience levels, I think, for the project. I started thinking about what I want to design, but I haven't actually started on the design yet. Probably start over this summer or early autumn. So we are going to and I may be pronouncing this incorrectly, La Marca in central Italy. Hotel Leone is a restored palazzo set on a hilltop village. It has about 12 bedrooms, all en suite, all luxury, and it has uh, outside terraces, a pool, um, a separate studio where we'll be hosting our workshops and different things. So there'll be lots of places at the hotel to, where we can relax and knit and chat. We'll also be exploring the local area and some local crafts while we are there. So we'll be taking part in a pasta making workshop, truffle hunting trip. I'm quite excited about that. Um, and we will uh, do, be doing a wine tasting lunch. We'll be visiting a local farm for an eco printing uh, workshop. And we'll be visiting a local pottery to learn about how they um, use traditional techniques. And there's a few other things as well. So lots of stuff will be happening while we are there. So I am really, really excited about this retreat. I hope you will be interested in joining me. It's going to be from the 11th to 18th of April next year, so 2025. And I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll put the link below. If you have any problems opening the link, do let me know either by commenting on this video or sending me an email and I can send you more information by uh, email. I will show you the photos on the flyer I have. As you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm really excited about that and I'm looking forward to uh, to that. I can't wait, it's less than a year away, so that's very exciting. I've got a couple of workshops coming up. 9th of May, I'm teaching mosaic knitting at Spinny Yarn in Bobby Tracy in Devon. I think the workshop is full or nearly full. Um, might be one space left, so I thought I'd mention it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put Spinny Yarn's details below. On the 4th of July, I'm teaching my sweetheart's 
scarf and spinny yarn as well. So sweethearts, I'll pop a picture on the screen, is a lace scarf with beads. So whether you are brand new to lace knitting or you've done some lace knitting before, this workshop will be suitable for you as long as you can knit and pull and cast and cast off, you'll be fine. And I'll teach you how to do the lace knitting, how to read lace charts, how to knit lace from written instructions, so whichever you prefer, how to block lace, um, lots of other stuff, fix mistakes, and how to add beads using the crochet hook method and other methods. So that's on 4th of July at Spinny Yarn in Bobby Tracy, just south of Exeter in Devon. And then next week it is Wonderwool. I feel like Wonderwool has cracked up on me. Um, all my yarn has arrived now. I have two big boxes sitting over on that side of my office blocking my door. Um, I had hoped to unpack some of this. I could give you a little bit of a sneak peek today, but I haven't had time. And I'm not going to have time this afternoon. And I'm filming this on a Wednesday afternoon. And this video will be going out on Thursday afternoon. So I have to edit it this afternoon so I can upload it uh, to YouTube. So I will show you a sneak peek of the yarn next week. Wonderful Wales is at the Royal Welsh Showground in Bilf Wales in Mid Wales next week, Saturday and Sunday, 27th and 28th of April. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's the third year in a row I've done it. I used to do it quite a few years ago and then I had a break for a few years and then this will be the third year in a row. And I really enjoyed it so far. So I'm looking forward to that again this year. Okay, so let's talk about what I've been knitting. So let's start with the, a project that's been kind of on hold for a little bit. Um, I was working on this in March when I was in Norway. I knitted on it on the way to Norway and on the way home from Norway. I don't think I knitted a lot on it in Norway. But when I came back, I said I had to block it to check whether a detail was working. So I'll show you what I mean. So I have, hang on, you can't see that. So I knitted these kind of flaps on. I will put this on so you can see what I mean. So I knitted these kind of flaps so they kind of hang down. So they will kind of cover you inside your coat. So if you've got a coat that kind of stand like that, they will kind of just give you a bit of extra warmth. But I feel like it needs to be wider. So I'm not happy about it. So I am going to... Um, what I've decided to do, I probably won't do it yet. I probably won't be releasing this till the autumn. So this will probably be on hold for a bit. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to unravel around, unravel these flaps, and then I'll just do a few rows of or rounds of garter stitch and cast off. And then on this end, I will um, knit on new flaps from the top down after I've thought about it a bit more. Um, so that it will be like a top down knitted cowl instead and because i have lots of yarn um so i've got all of that left and i'll have all of this once i've unraveled it so i i'm not going to rush to do it anytime soon because i have other stuff i want to finish but because i've talked about this for a while because i've been putting off blocking it i thought i would just mention it the yarn is um spectrum fiber Colour is Love Hearts and it is the Superwash. I can't read the label because I'm wearing contacts. Hang on, what is it? Superwash. Yeah, Superwash Merino double knitting. Uh, so Superwash Merino DK yarn. And I love this colourway. It's the Love Hearts colourway. So I thought I would just mention that because you may have been wondering what happened to that project. So it's going to be on hold and I will deal with it when I get time. It's living in my colour clutch. So we'll leave that on my desk actually, um, so I don't forget about it completely. And then the other project I've been working on a lot, well not a lot, but working on a bit this week is my uh, socks. So last week I shared that I was working on these socks. I got to where that marker is. So I've knitted a lot. I've knitted a little bit. So um, this is kind of my out and about project. Even though it's lace, so it's not super easy. But it's fairly easy because it's very easy lace. So it's like two, four, six, eight rows of lace. And then it's four rounds. So eight rounds of lace and then four rounds of um, rib. 
so it's fairly easy to knit on and we've been out a couple of times so I've knitted in a couple of coffee shops um so I'm making slow progress I'd like to get these finished I assume I'll probably end up taking these to Wales for me next week and get quite a bit of knitting done then we've got quite a long drive in the car tomorrow so I'll probably take this with me then and try and work on it in the car for a bit I'd like to get this finished in the next three weeks because I'm going to Norway in three weeks and I'd like to take another project with me to go to Norway so I've wound this yarn a while ago this is um pixie yarn and I would like to cast this on four socks when I go to Norway um I'm also thinking maybe next week at Wonderwall there's always times in a show when it's quiet and I like to have something to knit on because if you just sit there you just look a bit bored <laughs> so at least if I'm knitting it will encourage people to stop and ask what I'm knitting and look at my knitting and things like that so I like to have something to knit on but it has to be something easy that I can just drop so I'm and I don't have to look at so I'm thinking a pair of plain socks would be the best I was thinking about casting on for these um but I'm also thinking maybe I should be casting on for some socks in the yarn I actually sell on my stall and I did get some new sock yarn from Manos del Uruguay I got some of their Allegria sock yarn in some fabulous new colors or at least the colors look fabulous on screen I haven't looked at them yet so I might be wanting that to cast on um to knit during the show and then knit on my pink socks in the car on the way there and on the way home maybe uh, but we'll see I also have another project I cast on last week um, remember I finished my pixie cardigan I've been wearing it a couple of times I wore it yesterday when I was teaching and one of the ladies from my workshop yesterday um, was very interested in the pattern so I'm under pressure to get that written up um, I have a bit of a backlog of patterns now I have the pixie cardigan and my fluffy alpaca sweater my goal is to get both of them written up I'm going to Norway now in May for 13 days and then I'm going to Spain in June so I would really like to get these patterns written up and tested, uh, tech, edited, tech edited and tested over the summer so they're ready for release in say September and October so that's my goal but I don't do very well with self-imposed self deadlines so last week I was waiting for some yarn for a magazine deadline but it hasn't turned up so I decided to cast on for this sweater and I'm really glad I did I was a bit worried that I would cast on it for it on it for a couple of days and then this yarn would turn up and then I'd have to put it down but the yarn hasn't turned up and I made quite a lot of progress so look how much I've knitted so I'm really pleased I'm going to show you the swatch I knitted um this one because this swatch has been blocked so this has not been blocked so you can see it looks a bit not great this unblocked lace doesn't look that great so this is what it looks like hang on let me make sure i'm showing you the right way up this is what it looks like when it's been blocked so i uh, did pin it out the other day i said last week that i couldn't remember what needle size i'd use for swatching i think it was three and a half millimeter and it certainly looks from my knitted fabric here as if it was three and a half millimeter so I just decided to throw caution to the wind and cast on with three and a half millimeter I probably should have swatched again but a couple of days ago I did pin out sort of roughly what I had and measured it and I must admit widthwise it is borderline I didn't wet it and block it properly um, so it probably will grow a little bit more but I am slightly worried that it might be smidgen on the small side but hopefully not I might knit a little bit more and then actually pin it out properly and as if I'm blocking it properly take this off and put it on um, barber cord and soak it and block it out properly just so I can get a good idea of how wide it's going to be and how long it's going to be so far so I reckon I'm about halfway to the underarms maybe um i'm really enjoying knitting on it um i'm using yatagan which is a really affordable yarn 
and I'm using the Organic Trio, which is 50% organic merino wool, 25% organic cotton, and 25% silk. And it has 230 meters per 50 grams. So I'm really enjoying knitting with this. Um, it is lovely and light fabric. And I would like to, I'd really like to finish this before I go to Norway in three weeks. Just three weeks and two days from when I'm filming this. Because then I can take it with me. Because I think it would be a perfect kind of spring, summer sweater. Um, when I go to Norway will definitely be spring-like, more spring-like than summer. Here in Cornwall it's been unusually cold in April. It's been cold, it's been very wet, it's sunny at the moment, but it's really, really cold today. So I'm hoping by the time I go to Norway it'll definitely be warmer here, but also it'll be warmer in Norway. But Norway can be quite warm and pleasant, and maybe it can also be a bit like it is here at the moment, wet and cold. Um, so I'm hoping to finish this so I can take it with me, but we'll have to see how that goes on. This depends on what happens with magazine deadlines. So last week I put this in my Hohe uh, leather tote bag, but I moved it into my colour clutch. No, this is my glamour clutch. This is my colour clutch. This is my glamour clutch. I will link the patterns below. The patterns to both of these are available from Ravelry and Payhip, and I'll link them below. These are knitted in Yatagon as well. So you've got to, you know, strand the colourwork one. This one does have optional beads. Can you see those? Um, and this one has beads. Both of them knitted in Yatagon. Um, I have the clutch frames and the felt that I use for the lining. I have those for sale on my website. And I will have them also for sale at Wonderwall next weekend. So I and I will have beads and the yarn for this. I won't have this purple colour because when I ordered it, it was either out of stock or I forgot to order it. So I won't have this purple colour. Um, but last week I put this project in my Hohe & Co uh, leather tote bag, but it was a bit small for that bag because it's bigger and I needed to take it with me somewhere so I put it in here so that I could just transport it a bit easier because I threw this this into another tote bag but it's getting a bit big now it still does fit in there but I have to kind of squash it in a bit especially because I just started my third ball of yarn so that's taking up quite a bit of space so I think I'm going to move it back into my Hohe & Co bag when I go back downstairs after I finish this So that's all the knitting I've been doing at the moment. I'm enjoying just having two main projects because the cow I've not worked on for several weeks now. So when I'm knitting at home, I'm mostly knitting on the purple sweater. And when I'm out and about, I'm knitting on the socks. I do have to knit some swatches. I spent some time over the weekend knitting some swatches for a design submission. And I have another design submission next week. Plus some yarn has just arrived for a magazine design for my sample knitters. So I need to, so I need to knit the swatch for that this afternoon, so I can write the pattern tomorrow, um, and send off to her. Because I'm going to post the yarn tomorrow, so I will hopefully make quite a lot of progress on that purple sweater this week. I'm hoping before next week's podcast, I will get that purple sweater to the underarms at least, maybe further. But we'll see. You may re remember last week I was talking about the. Uh, socks that I knitted for my husband, the socks that I finished, it was a uh, Norwegian company, Dalagan sock yarn, DK sock yarn that we bought in Norway when we were there for Christmas. I finished those last week and I talked about it last week on the podcast, so you may remember that if you watched last week. And I did shadow wrap heels for the first time. I've done fish lips kiss heels once and I wasn't that happy with them and I understand they're similar to shadow wrap heel but because it's over two years since I did those I can't remember how I did them and how similar they are to shadow wrap heels but I was feeling quite bad because the first heel 
on the, the heel on the first sock was really bad. I really wasn't happy with it. I should have unpicked it and redone it, but I wasn't happy. And there were a few gaps and things, so I recorded a video where I own up to my um, bad heel and I showed you how I fixed it or how I tried to improve it. But I was, and that was out on Tuesday this week, and I was going through my YouTube comments this morning and I saw a comment, and I can't remember who it was who said this, but they said that they had tried the shadow wrap heel and had similar problems to me. So at least I feel better because then I know it's not just me, that other people have problems with this heel as well. So let me know if you've tried shadow wrap heel. It's a form of short rows, or let me know what your favorite short row heel is. I rarely do short row heels because I don't like them. I I've tried a few different short row heels now and I'm never one hundred percent happy with them. So um I might try and do German short row heels again. Or I might just give up on short row heels and stick to my normal afterthought heels or gas sudden heel flap. Anyway the Tuesday video this week was how I improved or tried to improve and fix this shadow wrap heel heel on the second sock which I think I said last week was much better so it's definitely a case of practicing makes if not perfect at least better I may try shadow wrap heel again on the pair of socks but I don't know yet I might the socks I knitted were DK so when the yarn is a bit thicker it's easier to see mistakes I might try it on a pair of four ply socks because the yarn will be a lot thinner so mistakes will be less visible so I might try to do that at some point over the summer and see if I can get a better result but if you want to see how I own up to my bad heel and how I fix it that video was on my youtube channel on Tuesday and I will link it below this video and I'll also link it at the end of this video another thing I want to share which I've had this book for a while and I keep forgetting to share it so last year I was approached by contribute contributing to a new book so this is Handed Knitted Tiles by David and Charles so David and Charles is a publisher. They're actually based in the county next to where I live in Devon. Um, and it, I actually, I've actually recorded a video where I review this book. So I show you the designs that I've contributed. I've contributed four, I think, um, patterns to this uh, book. And um, I show you the projects in this book and some of the designs and show you the ones that I created. So there are some projects in this book. So that is one of my squares. The squares are all really different. There is lace, stranded colour work, mosaic knitting, slip stitch, intarsia. It's a huge variety of different things. There are projects in the back of the book and they are, let me just show you quickly. So there is a bag, I've got to be careful with books, I don't show you the actual pattern. And there's a cushion and a throw and a needle case and a cushion, a lace cushion. I did actually create a lace cushion, but that um, was probably a bit too similar to that one. So it didn't make it into the final book, but that's fine. So I created three or four lace squares and one mosaic square. So there are 100 squares in total, loads of different designers. Some I've heard of, some I know, some I have, I don't know, some are new to me. And um, it's a really fun book. You can do a lot of stuff with these squares. You can use this as a kind of stitch dictionary. Um, all the squares are charted and some of them have written instructions as well. So you can use it as a stitch dictionary or you can just use these squares and make like a blanket. You can use them and expand them and make like a shawl or a scarf. You can make some of the projects in the back of the book or you can use those projects but swap out the squares for other squares. All the squares are supposed to be the same size. We were told how big they had to be. There are some shapes in here as well that are not squares. Uh, there is um, a um, hexagon, I think that is. And there, I think there's a triangle as well. So I'm not quite sure why, because my brief was squares, but 
they're all fantastic loads of different techniques oh there's a circle as well so i'll see if i can find any more photos that shows more of the squares so that is another photo that one that one there is mine so this is available from bookshops now it's definitely available in the uk i don't know if it's available in the us or other countries um i have an amazon affiliate link which i'm going to link below an affiliate link just means that if you choose to purchase through that link i will get a few pennies uh, which i'd really appreciate your support if you do want to get this book if you would use that uh, link that'd be great um but it is available from other places as well so i've seen it in waterstones online for example um so if you do a search i'm sure you'll find it other places as well so it's 100 knitted tiles they've also previously done a book called 100 crochet tiles um and loads of other books as well i contributed to another book by them a few years ago that was a sock book by lynn rowe so i'm going to link this book below in the video where i talk about this book in more depth and share the uh, squares i contributed to that book i that video will be out on tuesday I've also gotten back to an old hobby this week so I'm not going to show you the details now because I'm saving that for a separate vlog which will be out in a few weeks time but I decided in January that I wanted to get back into spinning again one of my friends and neighbours is into spinning as she goes to the local spinning group which meets, meets once a month and she's been encouraging me for a while to get back into spinning and in January I decided I would get back into spinning but I knew I couldn't go to the group in January, February and March the first time i'd be able to go would be april so i kind of kept putting it off because i was just busy with other stuff and then finally the spinning group was on saturday so finally last friday i got my wheel out i cleaned it all up because it was filthy and i oiled it and i had to change the dry band on it and i sat down and i thought i would just pick it up where i left off and i'd be able to spin yarn instantly it would be just like riding a bike famous saying it's just like riding a bike you get back up and you know how to do it well that was not the case when it came to spinning i really struggled on friday and i'd already told my friend i was coming on saturday and i was really worried about it because i thought i can't do it i couldn't even uh treadle so the pedaling the action with your foot if you don't, think, don't know anything about spinning that's called treadling and that's what makes the wheel go around and i couldn't even do that it just wasn't working and then when I finally managed to do that, I couldn't get the fibre to actually attach to my leader. So you tie a piece of commercial yarn to your um, bobbin and then you just start spinning onto that and then it pulls it onto the bobbin. Um, and I just couldn't do it. And I don't know what was wrong, but I couldn't do it. So I practiced quite a bit on Friday. I spun some really thick and lumpy yarn and I pulled off a little bit of a sample of it and kept it. Then I went to the spinning group on Saturday and my spinning just got so much better. And I'm going to show you in that vlog how my spinning improved just in less than 24 hours. They had a talk day, so like an all day group, 10 to 4, and you just sit and chat and spin. But then they quite often also do some talk, kind of talk, a demonstration or class. And one of the members did a demonstration and talk on plying in the afternoon. And because I I'm not, I worked out that I've not spun for 10 years. I got out of spinning when I was writing my first book, which is 10 years ago. Uh, I was writing that book this time 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years next year since the book was published. That's my book, Beaded Lace Knitting. And I've got a copy here. So that book came out nine years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, so I haven't spun for 10 years. And... I really enjoyed it but it's not easy i am i have a lot to relearn but the applying workshop was really good because it did give me some inspiration for what i'm going to do with the fiber i'm currently spinning but i am recording that as a separate vlog and that will be out in a few weeks and i'm thinking about maybe from may onwards to maybe do like a monthly spinning vlog to publish one tuesday a month um, so if you'd be interested in that let me know let me know if you've had a go at spinning if you enjoy spinning for me spinning was very much when i used to do it before i enjoyed spinning for the sake of spinning but i wasn't bothered about spinning to create yarn that i would knit with or do something with i would just spin because i enjoyed spinning but i wouldn't necessarily use that yarn for anything i would i did knit a few a little bit because i felt like i had to 
but I, there was a lot of hand spun yarn that I did not knit up and I don't know what I did with that I guess I must have de-stashed it at some point I have no idea what happened to that um, I don't have it anymore but I didn't knit with a lot of it but I would like to this time maybe knit with it I also looked through my spinning stash the other day uh, on my fibre stash I have a few it's right on the top shelf so you can't see it but I have a few bundles of uh, fibre left uh, I had loads more and I de-stashed a lot of that a few years ago because I hadn't been spinning for so long and it was taking up quite a lot of space so I got rid of a lot of it um, and I just kept a few bits that I really really liked so I do have some um, fibre but I may have to look out for some fibre when I go to um, Wonderful next week and if you watched last week you'll remember that I did get some fibre last week from Pixie Yarns but I have to make sure that spinning doesn't turn into an excuse to buy loads of fibre because we don't want that. I'm not going to have tons of time to spin. But I am thinking I might start adding a monthly spinning vlog to my um, Roto videos. Okay, that's it for this week. I feel like it's been a short podcast. I think it is over half an hour or about half an hour by the time I've edited it. But I... Um, I feel like I've been very focused this week on just a couple of projects. I've also been working on some design submissions so that takes up quite a bit, lot of knitting time as well and we were out quite a lot over the weekend because I spent all day Saturday at the spinning group. So not a ton to show you this week but hopefully there will be more next week and I will try and include some um, sneak previews for, you, for Wonderful next week as well. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I checked earlier and I am 25 away from 3,000 subscribers. So I would love to get the 3,000 subscribers by the end of April. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me a lot. The more people sus subscribe and watch and like and comment, the more people see my videos. So it would be really helpful. Uh, also, let me know if you're new here or if you've been watching me for a while, uh, especially if you're new, let me know, introduce yourself, say hi in the comments and let me know what videos you like watching. If you've been here for a while, also let me know what videos you've been watching. I've got a few videos I recorded for my Tuesday videos. So at the moment, on Thursdays, I'm trying to do a podcast and on Tuesdays, I do some sort of other video, either a pattern, where I don't talk about a pattern I've got coming out, or I review a knitting product or a yarn, or I do some kind of vlog or a tutorial. So I've got videos now scheduled till I think the first week in May. I need to record next couple of weeks. I need to record enough videos so I have tuesday video scheduled till the end of may because i'm going to be away for part of may um and i'm trying to get the tuesday videos done ahead of time so that if i have a busy week i don't have to stress about filming two videos i can just focus on on the podcast so let me know what you think um share your views in the comments below thank you for watching and i will see you next time